For the past week, Carnelian's body had been kept in a cave near the peak of Jade Mountain. According to Skywing tradition, their dead were offered to the sky for seven days before being burned. An old dragon named Osprey, the only one in the Sky Palace who would speak with Peril voluntarily, had told Peril that this was to make sure their spirits could fly free and return as Skywings, instead of coming back as any other kind of dragon. That kind of talk always made Queen Scarlet roll her eyes, though. She let her tribe follow whatever rituals they cared about, but she was not much interested in what happened to dragons after they were dead. Peril had visited the body twice, at night when everyone else was asleep. She didn't remember ever meeting the fierce red dragonette in the Sky Kingdom, but then she didn't know most Skywings by name. Queen Scarlet didn't like it when Peril tried to talk to other dragons. To be honest, neither did the other dragons. So, Peril had seen the Morning Cave by moonlight. The tall arched roof, the towering slender pillars of pale gray rock, all the windows and skylights that opened to the air. And she had seen the burned dragon wrapped in white silk, as still and empty as any of the charred bodies Peril had left on Scarlet's arena sands. But she hadn't seen the cave in the daytime before. She hadn't seen the sunlight pouring in, white and gold and backed with blue sky, or the wind rippling the silk so it looked like Carnelian was breathing. Now it really looked like a place where a spirit could be set free, a place where a new Skywing might rise again. Unless it was scared off by the angry dragons gathered around the body anyhow. On the plus side, at least all the shouting meant no one could hear Turtle and Peril sneaking up the passage toward them. Turtle crouched behind a boulder near the cave entrance. Peril peeked in, long enough to see at least a dozen Skywings crowding the chamber, and decided to stay farther back, keeping a few curves of the wall and several columns between her and the queen who hated her. I smell lies all over the story, snarled a Skywing. Not Ruby, but Peril didn't recognize the voice. First you tell us they're harboring a violent, bloodthirsty criminal, then you show us a dragonette who has died in exactly the way that creature kills. Oh, that's me, Peril realized. I'm the violent, bloodthirsty criminal. Unfair, I don't thirst for blood. If I need to fry someone to cinders, I will. But I'm not rampaging around killing dragons for fun. I haven't even killed anyone in months. Bloodthirsty indeed. It was a fire, Tsunami's voice interjected. I don't like Peril any more than you do, but I promise she didn't do this to Carnelian. Very supportive. Thanks, Tsunami. The unfamiliar Skywing hissed with disbelief. What sounds more likely to you? He snarled. That Scarlet's pet monster has murdered a dragon loyal to Queen Ruby, or that some mudwing figured out how to set off a dragon flame bomb and accidentally killed our soldier instead of her supposed Icewing target. I want to know where the mudwing is. Queen Ruby's voice was unreadable without her facial expression. Was that cold fury, or grief, or calm, decisive leadership? Peril had no idea. This queen was so different from the submissive daughter she'd played all of Peril's life. Peril couldn't figure it out at all. You don't seriously believe them! The other Skywing cried, his voice rising again. Look at Carnelian! Look at these birds! Here and here! These marks even look like talent prints! Peril coiled into herself, remembering the weight of the dragonette she had dragged out of the burning cave. Too late. Too late to save her. But if she had, if it had worked, if Carnelian were alive now, would Ruby have forgiven her? Would Clay be proud of her? Would he have called her his Wings of Fire again? And would it have changed anything? Don't touch the body, the queen said sharply. Peril pulled Carnelian out of the fire, Sunny said, her voice more subdued than usual. So you will find Peril's prince on her, but it's because she was trying to save her. Multiple hostile snorts. 
The arguing Skywing clearly wasn't the only one suspicious of the true story. Tell me what you're doing to find and punish the Mundwing who did this, said Queen Ruby. What is her name? Sora. That was Clay. It felt like wings spreading inside her heart. Clay was speaking in his wonderful warm voice. She's... She's my sister. He sounded so, so sad. Peril wanted to burst into the cave and wrap her wings around him. No, that would only hurt him more. What she should do instead was wrap her wings around the sky wings were being mean to him. Then she could watch them burn between her claws. Now, that was the kind of thought she probably shouldn't share with Clay. Your sister? said one of the other Skywings. This escape is looking more and more convenient, isn't it? Queen Morin has agreed to meet with you, Sunny said a little desperately. Here, at her palace, whichever you prefer, we can send a message to her right now. She wants to help you find justice. We all do. Peril always thought of Clay's soul as a torch that never went out, burning clear and true all night long. Sunny, on the other talon, was a blaze of warm sunlight. The annoying kind that gave a dragon headaches and made you want to scorch things because STOP SMILING ALREADY THE WORLD IS HORRIBLE GO AWAY! Peril knew this was bad. Sunny was the only one of Clay's friends who tried to be nice to Peril and yet Peril still wanted to push her off a cliff on a daily basis. Sometimes she dreamed that she had left Sunny in Scarlet's cage and run off with Clay, and at the end he'd turn to her and say, You were right, we don't need anyone else. Forget all the smiling sand wings and brave sea wings and beautiful rain wings we've ever known. But then, she supposed, he wouldn't be Clay, her Clay, who loved his friends so much he kept trying to die for them. That was the plan, by the way. That was never going to happen on Peril's watch. Your Majesty! A new voice cut in suddenly. Someone's approaching from the north! Queen Morin? Someone else asked. No, said the Watcher. I see orange scales. She trailed off, and in the silence that followed, Peril felt an overwhelming wave of horror surge slowly, inexorably toward them, and then crash over everyone listening. It's Queen Scarlet, Ruby whispered. You were right. She's still alive. Coming to kill you, I bet, Peril thought, since I wouldn't do it for her. It was the night after Peril had freed Scarlet from Burns' weirdling tower. The two of them were huddled around the fire in an unfriendly wasteland between the Ice Kingdom and the Kingdom of Sand. Scarlet was picking bits of reindeer out of her teeth and Peril was trying not to stare at her queen's newly disfigured face. We'll go home tomorrow, Scarlet growled. I'll figure out how to kill those prophecy brats from there, with or without you. Y you should know... Peril hesitated. What? Scarlet threw a hoof at her, whacking Peril hard just above her eyes. Damn, Mama, I'm furious at you already. I cannot handle being annoyed as well as disobedient right now. Peril rubbed her forehead and tried to remember why she had thought rescuing Scarlet was a good idea. Or maybe she had always known it was a bad idea, but she'd still felt as though it was her responsibility. Or maybe she had just needed Scarlet to stop slithering through her dreams, making every night even worse than the days of crocodile throwing and dragons screaming at her. It's just that Ruby's queen now, Peril said. And the Skywings really love her, she added, a little vindictively. Scarlet flapped one dismissive wing. I know about that, but Ruby will roll over and then back my throat. She's a good daughter, unlike some dragons I could mention. I don't think she will, Beryl said. 
She's made a lot of changes already. She doesn't do what Byrne wants her to do. She's pulled back on all the fronts of the war since destroying the Summer Palace. As if she's consolidating her power and gathering her warriors to defend the palace. And herself. Plus, she, um, she banished me. She's a lot scarier than I thought she was. A lot scarier than you think she is. Scarlet glowered at Peril, her yellow eyes full of flames. After a long moment, she said, That's what Byrne thought too. And if I tried to return, Ruby would defeat me. She threw back her head and laughed a strange, hollow cackle. Ruby of all dragons! <laughs> She's a mouse! She's not, Peril said. Truthfully, Peril wasn't sure what Ruby was. But a part of her knew she was digging in her claws about it because she wanted to hurt Scarlet. She wanted to hurt her the way she had been hurt, and she wanted to scare Scarlet away from the Sky Palace. True, if Scarlet returned to the Sky Palace, then Peril could too. She'd have a home again. But it wouldn't be worth it, because then Clay would be in danger. The minute Scarlet had her army back, she would go after him, and Peril wouldn't be able to stop her. Scarlet unconsciously reached one talon toward her scarred face, but didn't touch it. You think Ruby would fight me? She asked. She couldn't win. Not against me. But Peril could see it in her eyes. Scarlet knew what it was like to be afraid now. The venom attack had melted more than her scales. It had eaten away some of her confidence. The time she spent trapped in Byrne's Tower of Horrors probably hadn't helped either. Peril shrugged. I guess I'll find out. There was a pause. Now! Scarlet said. I have a better idea. She bared her teeth at peril. You return to the Sky Palace and kill her before I get there. I can't do that, Peril cried. I'm not even alone in the Sky Palace. Ruby said she'd have me executed if I went back. She can't have you executed if you kill her first. Scarlet said. Well, I'm not going to kill her, Peril said. You can't make me. You can't make me kill anyone else for you. I'm not that kind of dragon anymore. Scarlet's eyes narrowed. Oh, really? You think you've changed so much? Huh, I know you. You like killing dragons. You've always liked it. It's one of the things I can't stand about you. None of the simpering, moaning guilt another dragon might have. You were born to burn your enemies. And mine. Mostly mine. I don't want to be, Peril said stubbornly. Clay says I can be whoever I want to be. She knew right away that mentioning him was a mistake. Madwing! Scarlet snarled. He wouldn't like it if I killed Queen Ruby, Peril said. He wouldn't like me at all if I did that. But I won't like you if you don't. Peril couldn't believe the stab of dismay that made her feel. Why did she still care after everything Scarlet had done to her? Why did she suddenly feel horribly desperate to be Scarlet's favorite pet again? I don't care. Stop caring. Just one more dragon. Scarlet purred. Kill Ruby for me, and you can go follow your aggravating mudwing. It's the least you could do after you wouldn't let me kill that sandwing spitball. 
Peril poked her claw into a scorched circle of grass under her talons. This could be a way to please Scarlet and perhaps save Clay as well. Could she bargain Ruby's life for Clay's? Would Scarlet promise to let him live? But, for one thing, she couldn't trust Scarlet to keep her word. And for another, Clay still wouldn't like it. Even if she only did it to protect him, she knew he'd be dis disappointed in her. The last time they had seen each other, he had been hopeful. He could see another possible future for her. She wanted to be that dragon for him. No, she said. That's my final answer. Then you're useless to me. Scarlet hissed furiously. The next morning, Scarlet was gone. Peril had not been able to find her, and no one else had seen her for months, even in their dreams. Until she tried to get an Icewing student to kill the Dragonettes for her. Still trying to make other dragons do her killing. So something had kept her scared. Maybe Peril's words, or maybe hearing what had happened to Burn and Blister. But if she was coming this way now, then she wasn't scared anymore. Or perhaps her rage had finally surpassed her fear. Who is she looking for? Did she know Peril was here? I'll go face her, Ruby said, her voice clear and strong. No, cried one of the Sky Wings. We'll fire off, all of us. She's an enemy, said a third. And you're a much better queen than she was. We want you, not her. I agree, said Clay. The throne is yours now. She can't have it back. We'll all fight beside you. A long pause. Peril stabbed at a crack in the wall that beside her, scowling. She didn't like the sound of Clay acting all loyal and supportive to someone who wasn't her. That was her special Clay voice. That's the one he used when he told Peril she would always have a place at Jade Mountain, and said things like, I want you to stay. He wasn't supposed to use it willy-nilly on dragons who hated her. Ruby cleared her throat. <clears> throat> Thank you, she said. If that's how you all feel, then we'll fly out there together. Peril heard claws scraping on the rocks. She pictured the queen spinning toward the sky. A moment later, the cave echoed with the sound of flapping wings as they all took off. Two sky wing wings who don't both dislike me quite a lot. I should hide. I should run. I should run and hide. But if Scarlet was out there and Clay was flying toward her, Peril couldn't let him face her alone. Scarlet was still her responsibility. She darted into the cave, barreling past Turtle. Where are you going? He called. What happened to Stealth? I have to protect Clay! She called back, spreading her wings. She couldn't hear his answer over her wing beats as she shot through one of the skylights. It was Scarlet! Peril recognized the curve of her wings instantly, and she could see the dark scar on the side of her face even from a distance. The former Skywing Queen was beating her way toward them, her whole body radiating fury and vengeance. Ruby and her soldiers were forming into a defensive wing to confront her. Peril spiraled up into the clouds and hovered above the mountain peak indecisively. Should she fly down to join the soldiers around Queen Ruby and Clay? What if her appearance sent them into a panic or distracted them from fighting Scarlet? As long as Clay was not in immediate danger, maybe she should wait and see what happened before joining in. Why was Scarlet even here? She couldn't be planning to attack Jade Mountain all by herself. Could she? Perhaps this had something to do with the students who had gone looking for her. A group of four dragonettes had gone in search of Scarlet about a week ago, right after Carnelian died. Peril knew from Clay that they had been in the rainforest with Glory for a day, and then they had flown away to find an ice wing that Scarlet supposedly had imprisoned somewhere. 
but no one knew if they had found Scarlet. And Peril sort of expected that if they had, they'd all be dead. Was that why Scarlet was here? Had the Dragonheads done something to push her over the edge from caution to rage? She felt a sudden compression of alarm in her chest. Scarlet was carrying something in her claws. It was too small to be a body, surely. Scarlet wheeled about in the sky suddenly, out of flaming distance of the wall of Skywing soldiers facing her. Traitors! She shrieked. All of you disloyal cowards! She lifted whatever she was holding and shook it at them. I destroy anyone who opposes me! I will have my vengeance and I will get my throne back! This is just one of the dragons I'll kill and you'll all be next! She flung the object at them as hard as she could, then abruptly whirled around and flew away, her enormous wings eating up the distance with powerful strokes. One of the Skywings lunged forward to catch the missile. Peril couldn't hold back her curiosity. She swooped closer as the Skywing looked down at the thing in his talons, then turned, shuddering, to show it to Ruby and the others. Sunny began to scream as though her heart was being ripped out of her chest. Clay reached to catch her before she fell out of the sky. The Skywing was holding the severed head of Queen Glory of the Rainwings. <laughs>